Welcome to the second part of the comprehension check questions for chapter seven. We're still doing stoichiometry, so we're still gonna be using molar mass and mole to mole ratios. So the question for chapter eight tells me that ammonia can be burned according, and they give you a balanced chemical reaction. And they tell me that when I burn ammonia, if I burn 115.9 moles of ammonia, and I'm using excess oxygen. So remember we've talked about excess or limiting. So we have as much oxygen as we need. And the question is asking how many moles, and they're asking how many moles of water does it take? So I'm gonna start with what they gave me. They gave me 115.9 moles of NH3, and I'm converting that to moles of water. Well, I've told you in the past, if you don't know what to do to first convert to moles, but I don't have to do that. They already gave me in moles. And so when you're going from moles of one part of an equation to moles of another, you're gonna use the coefficients to make a ratio. So the moles of water I have, I have six moles of water and they react with a ratio of four of NH3. And so I'm gonna put water on top and NH3 on the bottom. That way NH3 cancels out and I'm left with my answer in moles. So you're gonna put this in your calculator and you're gonna say 115.9 times six divided by four. Your answer should be 173.9 moles of water. And since we started with four significant figures, you're gonna keep four significant figures in your answer. So if you started with 115.9 moles of ammonia and you burned it in excess oxygen, you would produce 173.9 moles of water. And it has phases on the book. And so the phase is gas because you're burning something. So this would be steam. Question nine is using your biology and it gives you the equation for photosynthesis. It's only a year ago, so I hope you didn't forget about it. But they're giving you the balanced chemical equation of how a plant takes carbon dioxide and water and makes sugar and oxygen. The question is telling me my plant needs a product of 67.1 moles. And so they wanna know is how much carbon dioxide does it have to absorb to make this much glucose? So we're starting with 67.1 moles and we're going from moles of one part of the equation to the other. So we're gonna use a ratio using the coefficients of the equation. So since I am canceling out the C6H12O6, I'm gonna put moles of it on the bottom and it's asking for CO2. So I'm gonna put CO2 on the top. The coefficient by CO2 is a six and it reacts in a six to one ratio. So you're gonna say 67.1 times six. And you're gonna report your answer with three significant figures. So you should end up with 403 moles of CO2, which means this plant needs to absorb 403 moles of CO2 to produce the glucose it needs. Question 10 is taking what we learned about molar mass using moles and grams and moles to moles, and it's applying it in one ratio. And so it gives us an equation for hydrogen monochloride and oxygen, and we're burning it in excess oxygen to make chlorine gas and water. And so they give us 15 moles. So they tell me I'm starting with 15 moles of HCl and I'm burning it in excess oxygen and I'm producing Cl2. But they're wanting to know how many grams of Cl2 I'm producing, not moles. Now we cannot do that in one step. So I have 15 moles of HCl and I cannot go from moles of HCl to grams of Cl2, but I can go from moles of HCl to moles of Cl2. So remember these coefficients give me a mole to mole ratio and I can use them to convert from one part of an equation to the next. So we have 15 times two divided by four. Now you end up producing 17, 0.5 moles of Cl2. This is like a pit stop. You have to do moles to moles first, so, but it's asking for grams. So I hope you remember that you can use the molar mass from your periodic table to calculate grams. Now, what is the molar mass of Cl2? It's two Cl's added together. One Cl is 35.45 and two of them equals a total of 70.9. And so that is my ratio that I'm going to use to go from grams to moles. So I'm going to take the 7.5 moles of Cl2 that I calculated and I'm using my molar mass of Cl2. And so I'm going to put 70.9 on top 
and moles on the bottom. That way the moles cancels out and you're gonna have an answer in grams of Cl2. I get 532 grams of Cl2. So if I start with 15 moles of HCl, it would produce 532 grams of this. Now, there's two steps to this and we're gonna get to these problems where they have lots of steps. So there's some things you need to remember. If I am going from one part of this equation to another part, like one product to another product or any of the within compounds, I have to use moles. I cannot go moles to grams there. These are converting between moles using this. So we're gonna do several of these so we get lots of practice. Question 11 is very similar. We have nitrogen monoxide and we're converting it and we're making a nitrogen gas and water. The question is asking how many moles do I need to start with? so that I can produce 855 grams of the product. And so the path that we're gonna take here is we have to start with grams of N2 because that's what they gave you. But once you go from grams of N2, I, if they give you information in grams, convert to moles. So I'm gonna convert this to moles of N2. And then the next step is going from moles of N2 to moles of NO. So this is like the path that we're gonna be making. And they give it to you in grams, first thing you have to do is convert it to moles. I have 855 grams of N2 and I wanna convert it to moles. And if I do the molar mass of N2, I have a nitrogen and I'm gonna add it to another nitrogen. Your periodic table in your book tells you the mass of a mole of nitrogen is 14.01. And so when I add that together, you get a molar mass of 28.02. Now this is grams per mole. So the number goes by the grams and I'm gonna put it on the bottom so that it cancels out. So in your calculator, you're gonna put in 855 divided by 28.02. And when you put this in, you should get 30.05 moles of N2. So now that I have this in moles, I can use the coefficients of my balanced chemical equation to make a ratio to go from one part of the equation to the next. Now I'm starting with moles of N2 and I'm going to moles of NO. So I'm gonna put moles of N2 on the bottom so it cancels out. And there's a two, it goes two to NO, and there's a one there. So you're gonna put a two by the NO. So two moles of NO react with one mole of N2. So you're gonna say 30.05 times two. You end up with 61.0 moles of NO. And we're gonna keep this in three significant figures so we started with three significant figures. So to recap what I did is 80 grams of nitrogen and we're asking me how many moles of nitric oxide. Well, I cannot go in grams of this over to here. I have to do moles to mole within my equation. And so that is what I did this first step is I converted this nitrogen to moles. And so once I had this nitrogen in moles, I was able to come down here and use the ratio from the balanced chemical equation to figure out how many moles of NO I would need to start with. So for question 12, the last of these comprehension checks, they give us a double displacement reaction and they give me, I'm dealing with the reactants here. So I'm wanting to start with 100 grams of calcium chloride and they wanna know how many grams I need to mix that with. Now I hear I'm dealing with grams to grams, but like we've talked about, I can't go from grams of this equation to grams of another. I have to make those pit stops in the moles. So I'm gonna write my path out for you. I'm starting with 100 grams of CaCl2. Then I'm gonna to go to moles of CaCl2. Once I'm in moles, I can use these coefficients to go to other parts of the equation. So then I'm gonna go from moles of this to moles of Al2O3. And once I'm in moles of Al2O3, I can go to grams of Al2O3. So you can tell there's quite a few steps to this equation. So the first part is going from grams to moles. We talked about if you don't know what to do, go to moles. To go from grams to moles of CaCl2, you have to first calculate the molar mass. 
And you're gonna calculate the molar mass by taking a calcium and two chlorines. And I got 110.98, so double check that on your own. So I'm gonna put grams of CaCl2 on the bottom and that will leave me with my answer in moles. So you're gonna take 100 and divide it by 110.98. When you do that, I went ahead and added back in the dot zero, zero here that I had left out because that gives me four significant figures and it means my answer needs four significant figures. So I should get 0 0.9011 moles of CaCl2. So I'm gonna now use the coefficients from my equation to go from moles of this to moles of this. So I'm starting with moles of CaCl2. I'm gonna put moles of CaCl2 on the bottom, that way they cancel out. And I'm going to moles of Al2O3. And so the coefficients that I'm gonna use is a three and a one. So you're gonna take 0 0.901 and divide it by three. You should get 0 0.3004 moles of Al2O3. So now the question is not asking in moles, it's asking in grams. So to go from grams to moles, you're gonna to need to do the molar mass. So I'm not gonna show you how to calculate that. You can do that for aluminum oxide. It's two aluminums and three oxygens. When you add up your three oxygens and two aluminums, you get 101.96 grams. So to go from grams or from moles of aluminum oxide, to grams, I'm gonna use the molar mass, which is grams per mole. I'm gonna make sure grams is on top, that way moles cancels out on the bottom, and you're gonna put this multiplication into your calculator. And you should get 30.63 grams of Al2O3. Just as a recap, they gave me grams and they asked for grams. And I cannot use my balanced equation to go from grams to grams. I can only go from moles to moles. So I had to go from grams first to moles of CaCl2. From moles of CaCl2, I had to go to moles of aluminum oxide. And then when I was in moles of aluminum oxide, I could then go to grams. There's a lot of steps to this problem. All right, I'll see you for the next video of the chapter seven review questions.